and greetings from Leipzig. Today we're visiting a really cool city that's full of contrasts. Leipzig is a place that offers a wonderful mix of lush green spaces with canals, gritty industrial areas that have been given new life, and a beautiful city center that oozes history. Over the course of our visit, we got to see that Leipzig is a city of many faces, and a few locals even told us the city has earned the nickname Heitzig because it feels like a younger, up-and-coming version of Berlin. So with all that in mind, in this video we'll be sharing some of the highlights from our visit, which include a fun food tour featuring everything from German baked goods to Southeast Asian street food. We'll also show you around our unique accommodations because yes, we spent the night in a warehouse. Plus, we'll show you which beer to order next time you find yourself here. The following is our travel guide to Leipzig for anyone who wants to make the most of 24 hours in the city. Good morning, good morning guys. Greetings once again from Germany. This time we've traded the countryside in for the city. Yes. We are back in Leipzig. We sure are. Interestingly enough, we've actually been to Leipzig twice before, yeah. but it was always for conferences, so we've right. never really had time to explore and see what the city has to offer. So once again, we've got about roughly 24 hours here, so we're going to take you out, show you the attractions, show you the food, and we're bringing you along for the adventure. Let's do it! We quickly dropped off our luggage and then it was time to join a guided tour with Alle Leipzig focusing on the neighborhood of Blackwitz. Our guide Daniel came to meet us where we were staying and our first stop was the Mule Cafe right around the corner from our place. We sampled all sorts of baked goods here, including one pastry called the Bee Sting, which had toasted almonds. Plus, we also tried a lingonberry crumble that was simply delicious. And yes, we did order a few cappuccinos to keep us fueled for the day. Plakowitz took us through this graffiti alley, which really helped highlight how this former industrial area with crumbling factories has become an open canvas for artists and also drawn a lot of creatives to this particular area. We also got to experience a very green part of the city, one that is dominated by canals. This right here is the Karl Heine Canal, which runs 3.3 kilometers in length across 15 bridges. During the summer months, you can rent kayaks, paddle boards, and even enjoy a ride on a Venetian gondola. All right, guys, so we are currently enjoying our food tour around Leipzig. And our first stop was actually the Mule Cafe, where we had some cappuccinos, a nice way to start the morning. We also got to try a few different cakes. You know how much we love baked goods. So that was a lot of fun. And then we've just been walking around the neighborhood of Plagwitz. We've been learning a bit more about the history and the industrial past this place has. And now we have just arrived at our second stop, which is actually going to be Vietnamese food. Sam and I really love Southeast Asian food and we haven't had Vietnamese in a really long time. So this next stop was Bamboo Street Food and it was a little taste of Southeast Asia street markets complete with plastic tables and stools. We got the combo tray that featured all sorts of dishes including rice, stir fries and plenty of seafood and pork. This was the most filling stop on the food tour so remember to pace yourself. So we have made it to our third stop on this food tour. Next place is just right behind me. It is called Wraps. So we're gonna go inside, have a little bite. Sam and our guide are already ordering. So we'll see what kind of goodies we get to try here. After the 
wrap, so we continued to a bakery specializing in slow baking. So we tried their bread rolls, which require a 48 hour resting period. And because we have a bit of a sweet tooth, we also got a cinnamon roll. Well, we just finished that fantastic food tour. Oh my gosh, that was so good. I mean, I'm so full and that's a sign of a good food tour. And that's after all that walking too. So not only did we get to have some delicious bites, but we also got a really good overview of the area where we're staying in. My favorite part of the food tour had to be the Vietnamese food experience where we're sitting down at the plastic chairs on the plastic tables low to the ground. It was very authentic. I mean, we also got to try like Italian food, different baked goods, just such a complete tour and such a, a delicious foodie city. I didn't realize how much Leipzig is a foodie city. So you can come here and eat to your heart's content. Overall, I really enjoyed the tour and um, it's a great way to just walk around on foot, enjoy some tasty bites and get to know your surroundings a little bit better. So next up, we are showing you around what is known as Leipziger Baumwollspinnerei. And basically it's Leipzig's cotton mill, or at least it used to be a cotton mill. It's certainly changed and transformed since closing down in the mid nineties. And basically right now, this is a super artistic nucleus, I would say. This almost yeah. feels like a little neighborhood in and of itself. Thoughts? So I don't think I've ever seen an area anywhere in the world where there's been such a cool repurposing, you know, like this place is just fascinating. The, all of these brick buildings, industrial buildings have been converted into either commercial spaces, hotels, there's art galleries. I see some creative businesses. I also see some event spaces. So yeah, yes. there's a lot going on in this area and it's kind of retained its arty, gritty edge too. For sure. If you enjoy taking photos, this is a really cool place to check out, not just for the architecture, but for a lot of the street art, the tags, the yeah. murals. We could spend half a day here, just even yes. just going through and exploring the inside of the buildings. <laughs> To tell you a bit more about this area, it was founded in 1884 with the mill reaching its peak in 1907. At that time, there were 240,000 spindles processing cotton and up to 4,000 workers. People worked here until production of thread was halted in 1993, a few years after German reunification. And now new life has been breathed into the place in the form of art galleries, studios, and even a warehouse hotel, which we'll show you shortly. Welcome to home sweet home for the night. As you guys know, we really enjoy staying in unusual accommodations when we travel. And I feel like this is a pretty special place right now. Yeah. We are spending the night in a former cotton mill factory mm -hmm. slash industrial complex. So as you've seen, we've already shown you a bit of the exterior. There's a lot of brick buildings. And then when we were walking in, you know, you've got that rough industrial vibe as we yeah. walk up the staircases and down these hallways. Can you hear yourself stomping? Yes, like it literally is a former warehouse, Yeah. but they have taken a couple of the rooms and turned them into guest bedrooms. The name of this hotel is Meister Zimmer. And basically there's no real reception. Like you're not going to meet any staff. They just leave the keys for you in a little lockbox. You get a code to kind of like let yourself in. But anyways, we have arrived at our bedroom and we wanted to give you a tour because this place is pretty cool. So basically, as soon as you walk in, you've got your couch. This would be like your little living area. You can sit down here. We have some cool artwork just behind me, yes. industrial lights. And then just across, you do have a very small kitchen. Um, in this complex, there are cafes, but if you wanted to prepare something quick, you do have a little stove, like yeah. you have your knobs there. 
They left some wine glasses. So if you follow me this way, we have a nice double bed and I like that they've taken some vintage televisions yes. to use as nightstands. I think that's pretty cool. Then we have some more modern art installations going on. Here we have our little office. If you need to do a bit of work during your trip, have a nice comfortable table, nice leather chairs, and well, the views, the yeah. views of this let area. Me, let me show you the views. Here they are. We are gonna take you out and have a, a proper walk through this complex. There are lots of different buildings to show you, but now let me show you the bathroom while we're at it. Come on in. So we have a walk-in shower with a glass door. A ladder if you wanna climb. <laughs> <laughs> it's a ladder the towel to, rack. to hold the towels. I love that. That's very smart. I like their Lower. little cabinet. And then you have your toilet. You have your sink. That is the bathroom. So we hope you enjoyed the little tour. There are a few different rooms inside this uh, factory, inside this warehouse. They all have a slightly different look. So when you make your booking online, you can choose which style you like best. And now I think we're gonna take you downstairs and do a little exploring outside. So let's go. Let's go. Dinner time, another meal. I know we've been eating a lot on this trip, but that's because German cuisine is just so delightful. So we hope you don't mind, but we're about to take you to dinner. And we've come to a place that is called Bayerischer Bahnhof. That means Bavarian train station. And this train station dates back to 1842. Apparently it is the oldest preserved head rail station. And it used to be a hub for tradesmen and travelers. Now it's better known for its food. You can see the restaurant over there. We're about to head in and order some delightful dishes and also try some beer later on. Stay tuned for the beer because there's something special coming up. For dinner that night, we went for some hearty dishes, perfect for a cool autumn day. Sam ordered the Wiener Schnitzel, which was served with potatoes and a side salad. And meanwhile, I got the Saxon Sour Roast Meat, served with potato dumplings, red cabbage, and apples. As for the beers, Sam went for the original Goza, and I got the Goza with raspberry syrup. But we'll talk more about the beer once we hop over to the brewery. So after dinner, we walked over to Dolden Madel over on the other side of the former train station because we wanted to try the city's famous beer. So Goza beer was first brewed in the early 13th century in the town of Goslar, which is how the beer got its name. However, it became so popular in Leipzig that local breweries copied the style and it was adopted as their own. Goza is a top fermented wheat beer that's flavored with coriander and salt, and it's known for its sour and citrusy flavor. It's the one beer everyone will tell you to try if you visit Leipzig. So the evening continues. We had a lovely dinner. We are stuffed, bellies are full. And now we are moving on to the beer. So we have come to Dolden Madel, where we have ordered two different beers. I am trying the Goze, which you had with your dinner. How was it? I sure did. It was fantastic. Okay, well that's good to hear. A little bit more sour than a typical beer. Okay. But I like it. Apparently that. this beer is brewed differently. So I'll be sampling it and we'll see if we can taste the difference or not. So cheers. Cheers to that. Let's see that's you. good. Like that? I find it a little fruity. Yes, it's a, a has, fruity. has a bit of a craft beer. Taste. A little yeah. sour. Yeah, yeah. That's good. Yeah. That's good. It is good. Yeah. I like it a lot. I find it a bit lighter than other beers I've had. So this is actually to my taste. 
to your taste. Audrey it's approved. Audrey approved. Audrey so approved. Cheers for that. Cheers for that. And now yes. it is your turn. I'm getting the local pills there. Yeah. I tried the one you just had for, for supper with my gigantic schnitzel, which I ate all of, by the, the whole way. Thing. Probably the best schnitzel of the trip so far. Wow. If you're going to eat there, get it, for sure. <laughs> but anyways, back to the beer. Let's try this Pilsner. Ooh, that's good too. Again, feels a bit lighter, a little citrusy. Goes down really easy. And um, yeah, I need some more beer to, to help uh, wash down that schnitzel that's just kind of sitting in the stomach right now. So this is a nice top up. Well, German beer is good, lots of variety. Yeah. So we're gonna keep yeah, there were over 20 on the menu, so wow, lots of choice. Prost, friends. <laughs> Good morning, Sam. Good morning, everyone. It's nice to be having a little bit more time here in Leipzig. So we've returned to the Mule Cafe, one of our favorite stops on our food tour yesterday. In fact, this was the very first stop and the closest place to our accommodation. So. We are heading to the train station. We're going to be heading to Berlin a little bit later on, but we have some hours to kill. And we thought we'd come back to this cafe, have a nice tasty bite for breakfast. Uh, is it Apricot Square? Yeah, yeah. it did. It's, yeah. It has crumble on top. And then what's this one that you got? It's a type of croissant. Ooh, with some uh, a dusting of icing sugar on top. Right? Yes, and we have a bit of the morning traffic going by. Yeah, we do. So yeah, we're just here enjoying breakfast and um, we're hoping to do a couple things before we leave the city. So I'm gonna have my coffee now. Look at the beautiful heart. A nice frothy cappuccino. Yes, oh, I don't wake up until I have my coffee. final hours in Leipzig exploring the neighborhood of Zentrum, which is the city center. Our first stop here was Maedler Passage, a historic shopping arcade that originally sold porcelain, ceramics, and earthenware. There's also a very famous underground restaurant here that inspired a scene in Goethe's Faust. So if you're a German literature enthusiast, this is a place to add to your list. Sculptures depicting scenes from Faust mark the entrance so you really can't miss it. Then, outside the arcade, we stumbled upon a statue of Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, whom we just mentioned. He studied law at Leipzig University from 1765 to 1768, so he's pretty famous around these parts. Also, fun fact, the Baroque building that sits directly behind him is the former home of the Leipzig Stock Exchange. because we had a train to catch, at this point we made our way back to the train station. All right guys, so trip to Leipzig is almost over and we are coming to you from the Leipzig Hauptbahnhof, which is the main train station. Apparently this is the biggest train station in all of Europe by floor area, so it is pretty massive. We've been filming a few clips showing you around the different levels, but right now we've come to platform 24 because this is where they have like a small little mini train museum with old trains, different styles, just kind of parked here. This platform is not in use, so you can just walk around, admire these beautiful old trains, and yeah, just another thing to do here at the train station. We've been checking them out, and now in a few minutes, we're gonna go grab our luggage and board our train to Berlin. One last quick thing to note is that in terms of transportation, in terms of getting around the city, mm -hmm. we took the S-Bahn and the trams. It's a fantastic yes. way to get from point A to B. And sometimes the tram would be the one that was coming next and other times it was the S-Bahn. So it's worth checking, keeping an updated list 
and then choosing the one that's going yeah. at a time convenient for you. And you can hear the trains, they're pulling out now, it's yeah. so loud. Yeah. So yeah, I guess that is all from Leipzig. Yeah. So we will say goodbye and see you in the next episode in Berlin. That's right. So, ta -ta. Ta -ta.